Projection of Solids Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video where we dive into the fascinating world of projecting solids. Today, we're tackling our very first problem in this realm. Let's start by reviewing the instructions for the solid we'll be working with. A square pyramid with an edge of a base of 50 mm and a height of 100 mm is resting on the side of the base in HP. The axis of the pyramid is inclined 40 degrees to HP and 50 degrees to VP. Draw its projection. Let's delve into the instructions with the help of a three-dimensional figure. The instructions specify that a pyramid with a 50 mm base and 100 mm height is resting on the horizontal plane, HP. It's crucial to note that the pyramid is positioned in this manner because the instruction mentions that a square pyramid with an edge of a base of 50 mm and a height of 100 mm is resting on the side of the base in HP. This is emphasized by the keyword, resting on the side of the base in HP. Since the pyramid is meant to be inclined so that it rests on one of the sides of the base, we're maintaining this orientation. If the instruction had indicated that the pyramid should rest on one of its corners, then the pyramid would have been positioned in this manner. Next, it's mentioned that the pyramid is positioned in such a way that its axis is inclined 40 degrees with HP and 50 degrees with VP. In this scenario, here's how the pyramid appears in the front view and the top view. To achieve the final output, we can follow these three steps. Step 1. Drawing the true shape of the pyramid. In this step, we simply assume the pyramid is resting on HP and draw its front and top views, resulting in the following representations. Step 2. Inclining the pyramid 40 degrees with HP. This adjustment alters the front view to this configuration and the top view to this perspective. Step 3. In this step, we'll further incline the already inclined pyramid 50 degrees with VP. Following these steps will yield the required final results. Let's kick off with step 1, constructing the true shape of the pyramid. We'll begin with the top view of the pyramid. Grab your ruler and sketch a square with sides measuring 50 millimeters. Let's label the corners of the base as A, B, C, and D. Our apex point will be denoted as O slash P. Next, onto drawing the front view. To do this, project lines from the corners of the base and the center point. Given that the height of the pyramid is 100 millimeters, to mark the height of the pyramid, we will first draw the axis of the pyramid, which passes through this center point. The axis looks like this. Next, Mark the length of 100 mm on this axis with your ruler, as illustrated. This point serves as our apex for the front view. Once done, complete the front view accordingly. With that, our front view is complete. Let's label them as A dash, B dash, C dash, and D dash. The apex point will be labeled as O dash, and this point will be P dash. And there we have it, step 1 concluded, the true shape of the pyramid. Next, let's move on to step 2. In this step, we need to incline the pyramid axis to 40 degrees. This adjustment will appear like this. Carefully examine this figure. When we incline the axis of the pyramid by 40 degrees, the base of the pyramid will be inclined at 50 degrees with the reference line. To achieve this 50 degree angle, we subtract the angle made by the axis from 90 degrees, resulting in 50 degrees. For instance, if instead of 40 degrees, the angle made by the axis was 30 degrees, we would have subtracted 30 degrees from the 90 degrees, giving us the base angle of 60 degrees. I hope this clears up any doubts. In this case, the angle made by the base with the reference line is 50 degrees. Let's begin drawing. Mark a point on the reference line, labeling this point as C-D-. Next, take a protractor and place it on this point. Mark a point at a 50-degree angle. Using this point as a reference, draw the line representing the inclined base of the pyramid, measuring 50 millimeters in length. The midpoint on this baseline will be our point P-, from which the axis of the pyramid will extend. 
To mark the axis of the pyramid, use a protractor. Position it at point P- and mark a point at a 90 degree angle. Then, draw the axis of the pyramid as shown. Finally, we need to designate the apex point of the pyramid. Take a ruler and measure a point 100 millimeters from point P- along the axis. This point will be the apex point of the pyramid. Next, to draw the top view of the pyramid, we need to project the lines as shown from the inclined front view and the true shape of the top view. With the help of these projection lines, we can draw the inclined top view of the pyramid. The intersection of these lines will give us point A1, D1, B1, C1, P1, and the intersection of these lines will give point O1. After this, we need to draw the lines to form the top view. When drawing, we follow certain rules to avoid mistakes. Here, the rule is to draw the dark line joining the outer points. Next, we will draw the base of the pyramid. To complete the base, we can see that it's formed by joining points A, B, C, and D. Since, points AB, BC, and AD are already joined, we only need to join points CD. However, there's a catch. We cannot join these two points with a dark line, because, when viewing the pyramid from the top like this, the baseline is below and is overlapped by this surface. Therefore, the CD line will be a dotted line, since that edge is hidden below the surface. Next, we need to join points A1 and O1, and then points B1 and O1, which will be the inclined edges of the pyramid visible in the top view. These lines are dark because they are visible from the top view. Here, there's a rule to keep in mind. If you find it difficult to visualize the top view, always remember this. Never let two lines of similar kinds cross each other. For example, if we have a dotted line, any line crossing this dotted line should be a dark line. Conversely, if there is a dark line, only a dotted line can cross it. By remembering this rule, you will avoid making mistakes. In the end, we will draw the axis of the pyramid, which will pass through point P1 and point O1. This completes our top view with the axis inclined at 40 degrees to HP. The next and final step is to incline this pyramid axis 50 degrees to VP. This can be drawn using two methods, the normal method and the auxiliary plane method. In this video, we will be drawing using the normal method. In the normal method, we will incline this pyramid axis 50 degrees to VP like this. After this, we can project lines from each point of this top view to construct the front view of the pyramid, which is inclined at both HP and VP. Mark a point on the reference line. After this, take a protractor and mark a point at 50 degrees as shown. Next draw a line passing through these two lines as shown. This will be our axis line. Next. Mark a point on this axis line, this point will be our point P1. After this, take a compass and adjust it to the length between points P1 and O1 as shown. And using this point P1 cut an arc, as shown on the axis. This point will be our point O1. After this, adjust the compass to the distance between point O1 and point A1, which is also equal to the distance between point O1 and B1, and cut the arcs as shown. After this, adjust the compass to the distance between point P1 and A1, which is also equal to the distance between point P1 and point B1. Using point P1 as the center, cut the arcs as shown. This will give us points A1 and B1. Then, adjust the compass between point O1 and point D1 which is also equal to the distance between point O1 and point C1. Using point O1 cut the arcs as shown. Next, 
Adjust the compass to the distance between point P1 and C1, which is also equal to the distance between point P1 and point D1. Using point P1 as the center, cut the arcs as shown. This will give us points C1 and D1. With this, we have got all the required points. In the end, join these points to get the inclined square pyramid. This pyramid is similar to the inclined pyramid, but it is inclined to VP as well. This is the final top view of the pyramid inclined to both HP and VP. With the help of this pyramid, we can draw the top view. To do so, project vertical lines from all the points of this pyramid as shown. Next, project horizontal lines from all the points of this inclined front view as shown. The intersection of these two lines will give us A1 dash, B1 dash, C1 dash, D1 dash, P1 dash, and O1 dash. In the end, we have to join all these points to get the final front view of the pyramid. To do so, we will follow the same rules. Join all the outer points with a dark line. Next, draw the base of the pyramid. Since we are looking from this side of the pyramid, the entire base will be visible. Therefore, we will join all the points forming the base with a dark line. Next, we can see that points B1 dash and O1 dash will be joined with a dark line since this edge is on top when we view from this side. This can also be remembered as a rule. If a point is lying inside and is connecting two dark lines, then the third line should also be dark. Similarly, if an inner point has two dotted lines connecting it, then the third line should also be a dotted line. Remember, this rule is only applicable to the inner points. The line joining the points D1 dash and O1 dash will be dotted, since that edge is behind. Towards the end, we're focusing on drawing the axis of the pyramid. Remember, the axis line is crucial because it goes through the center of the pyramid. So, if we have situations where different types of lines overlap, like a dotted line, axis line, and dark line, we follow a priority rule. Dark line comes first. Then the axis line. Last is the dotted line. So, if the dark line and axis line overlap, we draw the dark line. If the axis line overlaps the dotted line, we prioritize the axis line. In our current scenario, there's no overlapping. So, we can draw the axis line directly, passing through point P1 and O1. Therefore, we have the final required front and top view of the pyramid. I trust that this video has aided your comprehension of the projection of a square pyramid. With this understanding, you can apply the same principles to project any other solids. If you found my video helpful, please consider clicking the like button and supporting my work by sharing this video with your friends. Additionally, you can further enhance your learning by joining my full course. Simply visit the link provided in the description. Thank you for watching until the end.